Articles that lead this episode of Healthy and Happy Senior Living are Type 2 Diabetes and Cognitive Decline. We answer the question, is Tai Chi more effective than walking? Next up, does glaucoma cause blindness? And if so, what do we need to know? If you've had a stroke, what is the best diet for stroke patients? These stories and ever so much more in this episode of Healthy and Happy Senior Living. I am your host, Stephen Carter. For more than four decades, I have helped thousands upon thousands of people move from stress to success using an array of methods. As I am well into my senior years, I am keen to provide information about health, well-being, emotional, and physical prevention methods that are founded in science, and of course, the occasional story that makes us laugh and puts a smile on our faces. And if you haven't subscribed or you're not following where you get your podcasts, this is an excellent time to do that. After, of course, the episode is finished. Who is this show for? Obviously, if you're a senior, this show is for you. It's also for you if you're a caregiver for a senior, whether you're a family member caring for a loved one or whether you are a professional caregiver. It is vital to know the latest research that affects seniors so we can live the best life possible. Our first article comes from Medical News Today, headline, Type 2 Diabetes and Cognitive Decline, Is Tai Chi More Effective Than Walking? Here are the study highlights. A study shows that people with type 2 diabetes-related mild cognitive impairment experienced a slowing of their cognitive decline after participating in Tai Chi Chuan sessions. Next point, the sessions lasted for 24 weeks, during which another group performed an equivalent amount of brisk walking, point three, compared to walking, Tai Chi Chuan's benefits were greater after 36 weeks. Why might this be the case? One hypothesis for Tai Chi Chuan's larger effect is its emphasis on continual learning through the constant memorization and ongoing refinement of positions and movements. This study involved 328 people, all over 60, and each of those study participants had been clinically diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and MCI. All participants took a 30-minute diabetes self-management class once every four weeks for 24 weeks. Those who participated were randomly assigned to one of three groups. The first group received instruction in 24 forms simplified Tai Chi Chuan, or Tai Chi. The second group was trained in moderate-intensity fitness walking. The two groups each took part in 60-minute supervised Tai Chi or walking sessions three times a week for 28 weeks. The third group, which is the control group, did not receive any Tai Chi or fitness walking training. The Tai Chi and walking groups earned better scores in cognitive tests than the control group after 24 weeks and again after 36 weeks. Interestingly, the two exercise groups' scores were essentially the same at 24 weeks. However, by the 36-week mark, the Tai Chi group's cognitive performance significantly bested that of the fitness walking group, and this suggests Tai Chi may provide a longer-lasting benefit. 
Tai Chi was originally a martial arts technique that came out of China. It's been practiced in China for many centuries. Modern Tai Chi is, for the most part, focused on exercise and well-being. If this is of interest, check your local area for Tai Chi training. Organizations such as the YMCA, some fitness centers, and senior centers offer Tai Chi classes. They are typically reasonably priced, and you can also learn basic Tai Chi from YouTube videos and books. I do recommend, however, taking formal training if that's at all possible. Glaucoma. Does glaucoma cause blindness? As someone who takes drops and has been dealing with glaucoma for a while, this article is important, I think, for everyone. The lead paragraph, glaucoma is the most common cause of blindness in older adults. The condition involves damage to the eye's optic nerve, and without treatment, it can lead to vision loss or blindness. Glaucoma is the most common cause of blindness in older adults. If you're not seeing an ophthalmologist, and I recommend an ophthalmologist over an optician, I encourage you to schedule regular appointments. Because I am a glaucoma patient, I go every three months to have the pressure in my eyes checked, and of course I take drops. I am not keen to have an operation, so I am doing what I believe is necessary to prevent glaucoma from getting worse. By the way, this article and all of the articles that I'll share today all will be linked up in the description section, and that's also known as the show notes. What is the best diet for stroke patients? This article from Medical News Today, first uh, paragraph, diet is an important part of recovery following a stroke. It may involve making changes to help prevent further strokes, as well as adjustments that accommodate any symptoms a person has, such as difficulty swallowing. Diet for stroke prevention typically involves eating lots of fruits and vegetables, lean protein, whole grains, and foods low in added salt. The article goes on to tell us some people recovering from a stroke may also have other health conditions that require dietary changes, such as diabetes or high blood pressure, as these conditions may have contributed to the stroke. It's important to also address them. This article goes on to describe exactly what you should be doing and the consequences for not doing what we know is the right thing, which is consuming a good quality diet. In MedPage Today, headline, Relaxed. A1C OK for Mitigating Dementia Risk in Older Diabetes Patients. Keeping Most Readings Under 9% Avoided Elevated Dementia Risk. The article goes on, quote, Even hitting more lenient glycemic targets was enough to keep dementia risk at bay in older adults with type 2 diabetes, Researchers assured. The described study involved more than a quarter of a million patients. Those who kept more than half of their hemoglobin A1C measures under 9% saw a significantly lower risk of dementia compared uh, with those who had the majority of measurements over this threshold. As we commit to taking care of our health, our adrenal system is an important part of doing that. Headline from Medical News Today, What to Know About the Adrenal Glands and Blood Pressure. 
quote, some adrenal gland conditions can cause high blood pressure with serious, potentially severe complications. Adrenal glands are an essential part of how a person's body regulates blood pressure, metabolism, and immune responses. Conditions that affect adrenal gland function can significantly affect this regulation. One potential complication of adrenal dysfunction is high blood pressure or hypertension. How common is hypertension? Well, almost half, almost half of all adults in the United States have hypertension. In 2020, the condition caused or contributed to more than 670,000 deaths in the United States. This article goes on to talk about how the adrenal glands can affect blood pressure and what you and I need to do to make sure that that does not happen. In Yahoo Finance, which I, I guess this was originally from Fortune, headline, Four Science-Backed Habits That Keep You Mentally Sharp Into Your 70s From Older Adults Who Lived It. Lead paragraph, Simply reading stats on the sheer number of people in the U.S. who are currently living with Alzheimer's disease, 6 million, or 1 in 9 adults age 65 or older, according to the Alzheimer's Association, is enough to make you want to take immediate action to ward off cognitive decline. Uh, but where do you begin? There are details abounding in this article, but the four activities. First, daily exercise. Daily exercise. And there's some discussion about what that type of daily exercise could be. Making meaningful connections. Making meaningful connections. This does not mean you have to be a social butterfly it does not mean you have to be an extrovert, but there are things all of us can do to enhance our emotional connections, and some of those suggestions are in the story. Number three, learning something new. Learning something new. Classes don't just offer interpersonal connection, but allow you to learn something new which, opposed to doing the same crossword-style puzzle every day, means that you're engaging more of the brain and will lead to growth of new pathways and connections. Again, the article offers some examples for you to consider. Finally, eating for brain health. Eating for brain health. As with most anything in health, you can't forget the power of your diet and details about that also in this article. And finally, from Medical News Today, headline, A Daily Dose of Blueberries Could Improve Cognitive and Cardiovascular Health. A Daily Dose of Blueberries Could Improve Cognitive and Cardiovascular Health. Key Points. Eating a handful of wild blueberries each day could strengthen cognitive and cardiovascular health, according to a new study. The study finds that blueberries are responsible for improving vascular and cerebral blood flow, which are some of the likely mechanisms behind healthy cognitive function. Anthracinians, I believe that's pronounced correctly, anthracinians are polyphenols, a family of plant-based compounds increasingly associated with health benefits. A cup of blueberries is more than a tasty snack, according to a new study from King's College London, Faculty of Life Sciences and Medicine in the United Kingdom. It can also provide a brain boost, lower blood pressure, and contribute to better cardiovascular health. More details are, of course, in this article. This article and all articles are linked in the show notes or 
episode description. If you have not subscribed or you're not following, which of course is free to do, this show, Healthy and Happy Senior Living, this is a perfect time to do that. If you would like to reach me to comment on anything in this or any other episode, do email me at cartermethod at gmail.com. If you would like information on reducing stress, and who doesn't want to reduce stress, visit my website, stressreliefradio.com, stressreliefradio.com. Click on the podcast tab and make your selection from the various shows available. Until our next visit together, your host here, Stephen Carter, and I wish for you and your loved ones blessings in abundance.